What's up everyone? Today I wanna to give you 20 tips for faster editing within Premiere Pro. And this video was made possible by my friends at Envato Elements. Tip number one, use pancake timelines. What I mean by this, if you have, say, a long sit down that's, say, 40 minutes long, you can actually click that sequence and hold, and when you click and hold, it'll move it around. You can drag it to the top of your timeline area and drag this up like so. You can change the size with Shift Plus or Shift Minus, and now you have an area that you can scrub through, find your best spot, and simply drag that into your final project. It is a game changer. This leads me to tip number two, use key bindings to help cut down your clip. J, K, and L will actually help you fast forward and rewind. If you hit L, it'll fast forward. If you double tap it, it'll keep going faster. And if you hit K, it'll pause and J will actually rewind. Now, if you wanna cut down your clip, you can hit Q and that will delete everything before the playhead. And if you scrub forward and you hit W, that will delete everything after the playhead. So using these in tandem, I can hit L and then I can hit Q to delete that first half and I can hit L again to fast forward and then I can hit W to delete the back half. Tip number three is scene edit detection. Say you have a large piece that you wanna chop up for social, all you need to do is right click, head up to scene edit detection, and then click apply a cut at each detected cut point. As soon as you click analyze, it's gonna analyze your entire video and it will make cut points at each desired cut. Now you can use this to quickly move and rearrange around all of these videos to get a smaller video for social or sharing it however you like. Tip number four is creating presets. If you like something or you constantly use the same effect, you can actually go into your effects, type in your effect and drag it onto your video clip. Whenever you make a change to that video or you like the effect, all you have to do is right click on that specific effect and select save preset. Name this whatever you want. I'm gonna name it test and you can see that your preset is now in your presets bin. There's a couple different save options. You can right click save preset and go to scale, anchor to in point or anchor to out point. Scale will basically scale this if this clip is longer. Anchor to in point will anchor that so it never changes no matter how long your clip is and anchor to out point will keep that at the end. Tip number five is saving text styles. So when you click T and you type in text, all you have to do is hit Control A to highlight everything and head on to Styles and click the style that you have saved. What that'll do is it'll, it'll remember the font and what was the size of it. In order to save a text style, all you have to do is pick any font you want, change it around like this weird one, for example, and come up here to this down arrow and click Create a Style. Name that style whatever you want, so that way whenever you go back, you can swap between them quickly and easily. Tip number six is keyframe interpolation. As you can see right here, these two keyframes are linear keyframes and it does not look good if you're zooming into your clip. If you right click on your first keyframe, you'll see that you have a ton of options. Easing out on your first keyframe and right clicking on your second keyframe and go to easing in is going to allow that zoom to start gradually and end gradually. Furthermore, you can click this down arrow and you can adjust the speed by dragging them both to the center and you'll get a really slow start into a quick zoom and goes back out nice and smooth. So keep playing around with all of those to get your desired keyframe look. Tip number seven is using R for the rate stretch tool. If you click R, you'll notice that it brings up this new icon. If you click and drag at the end of your clip, it'll actually change the speed. Furthermore, on tip number eight, you can hit Control R and that will bring up the clip speed and duration so you can get something down to like 40%. Tip number nine is using in and out point. So if you have some clip in the project window that you want to use, you can hit I to set an in point and you can hit O to set an out point and you can simply click and drag that down into your timeline. Very fast, very easy. Combining the last tip with this one works great. So instead of clicking and dragging down, you can actually just hit comma and that will import that down into your timeline and you can furthermore go through your clips set an endpoint and an out point, and then just hit a comma again. And as you see, you can quickly and easily add clips down into your timeline. 
This leads me into tip number 11. So as soon as you add these clips to your timeline, you'll notice that your screen goes black because this is your timeline. You can actually drag your source window around and I would recommend putting it into your program window so that you can quickly and easily flop back and forth. So if you're scrolling through here trying to find some dope clips, all you can do is do that and then you can hit the comma button and then quickly go back to your source window by clicking up here and now you have that video that you are pulling clips from to quickly and easily pull more clips down into your timeline. Tip number 12 is making custom workspaces. Each one of these windows can be resized and dragged around and you can drag anything anywhere. I like keeping all of my effects and stuff on the left hand side. Some people put them up here, but what I recommend is put your project window at least all the way on the left side. So when you go through all your clips, you can see them all right here nice and easily and quickly and easily drag them down into your timeline. Tip number 13, let's say you have a text layer and you wanna manipulate this. Instead of heading over to the caps and, and graphics tab, all you have to do is double click on that text layer and it will actually bring up the essential graphics panel where you can go through here and change your text layer to your desire. All right, I use tip 14 like crazy. So if you're like me and you're working on large projects like this, constantly render your project so you don't have to keep previewing everything. So click I to set an endpoint, O to set an out point, go up to sequence and then click render into out. This will actually help render all the effects and transitions that you did so that whenever you play it back to preview your video, you will not have to re-render all those effects every single time. All right, this one's my favorite. So let's say you're in the color tab and you're constantly having to chuck through and color grade all of these videos that you have in your timeline. Well, what you can do is you can actually head up to sequence and then select this something called selection follows playhead. Now, when everything is selected over here in the V1 through whatever V layer you have, whenever you play and pause your video, it'll actually bring up a selection that will select that video layer right there. So if you go further, the selection will actually follow the playhead. So instead of having to click each video, you can actually just play through here, adjust the colors as needed, and then whenever it gets to the next one, you'll be able to simply pause the video and adjust those colors, and it will manipulate that video. Tip number 16 is editing your default media scaling. Head over to edit, go to preferences, and go down to media. And from here, click default media scaling and click set to frame size. What this will do is if you have a 4K timeline and you have a clip that's 1080p, whenever you drag it in, it will always go and scale up to the size of the project you are working on, which is really nice. So that won't have you go in here and change this to like 200% or something. Tip number 17, use productions. It's a great way to keep all of your assets in one place and you won't have to drag them into Premiere Pro every single time. And the best thing is it actually links across everything. So instead of having to create new assets or new projects for things, you can just save things such as um, video effects, templates, or bugs, stuff like that quickly and easily for you to access. There's a video showcasing all of this in the description down below. Envato Elements has unlimited access to over 55 million assets, such as fonts, video templates, motion backgrounds, sound effects, and more. They have a simple license and it will even count when your subscription ends. Speaking of, if you click the link in the description, you will get 50% off an annual subscription, giving you access for less than $20 a month. When collecting more assets for your videos, I would highly recommend checking out Envato Elements. I've actually added Envato Elements to my main production, so I can just simply download whatever I want. And like, for example, this glitch transition right here, I can add that to my video, apply a screen, and I have a simple glitch. Tip number 18 is changing your keyboard shortcuts. So go to edit and keyboard shortcuts and then go in here and look at everything, see what you're able to manipulate. And if there's a button that you use all the time, for example, like the cut button or the cut tool, you can actually remap that to something like I have down here, which is control K which is super helpful so when you're going through here and if I need to cut something, instead of having to click C and then find that point, if my clip is selected, I just hit Control K and that will make a cut right there. I feel like tip number 19 shouldn't even have to be told, but when you're working on your project, constantly hit Control S and that will save your project because if you lose something that you're editing on, it's really annoying. So Control S, just hit Control S, you got it. 
And finally, tip number 20, if you head on over to the audio tab, you'll see something called the audio track mixer. And if you don't see that, go down to window and select audio track mixer. Now what this does, is it actually applies an audio effect to the entire audio layer. So say you have like an interview on the first audio layer, you can actually apply a hard limiter or a fill left with right if you're doing dual channel. And you can apply all of these effects that will stack on top of each other for not just that one specific audio clip, but for the entire timeline. All right, y'all. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, please click that like button. And if you want to see more tips like another video or let's say 25 tips or 50 tips in the next video, please let me know down in the comments below because I really would love to help you guys out. All right, you know what to do. Click that like button. Let me know what you think down below and I'll see you next time.